Hey everyone, and welcome to our sleeper train on the way to Prague. We left Krakow in Poland last night. We're going to be arriving in Prague in about 15 minutes. Today is the 18th day of our epic European adventure, where we're traveling around 10 countries in three weeks using only trains, ferries, and taxis. The plan is, once we get to Prague, we're going to have a walking tour in the morning, and then we'll explore ourselves this afternoon. Later in the afternoon, we're going to catch another train all the way to Berlin, where we're going to spend the next two days. And it just brought us some breakfast, so let's have a look at what we've got, shall we? They feel like few bread rolls in there, and then some cream cheese, butters, and chocolate biscuit weight in the bread. And that's what the bread rolls look like. They're quite nice, actually. And we're just about to arrive into Prague. We've dropped our bags off at the life luggage area. We're outside the train station and we're going to walk to the old town square. According to Google Maps, it's going to take about 16 minutes. It's only been five minutes and we've already spotted two druggies fighting each other outside the train station. Yeah. Well, welcome to Prague. The tour we're going to do this morning around Prague is a free walking tour, which I found on the internet by a company called Sandelmans. I'll leave a link in the description below. The puppet looks Tom a bit like Pob. Tom it looks a bit like Pob, but with hair. Ooh, that looks like Navy Blue Queen. Ursula. Uh, is that her name? Ursula? Is that the fair one? I, mean, I think so. Ursula and Clara the Veil all mixed together. We've made it to the old town square. So this is where we're going to meet our guide a little bit later. So we just come here for sit down and relax for a bit. The walking tour we're going to do this morning is a free walking tour provided by Sandelmans. I found them on the internet when I was looking for walking tours around Prague. It's going to last a couple of hours and it's going to start shortly. Hopefully it's going to be really good and informative, but we'll see how it goes when we're doing it. My name's Brian, but I'll do the proper introductions uh, in a moment. Uh, I tend to wear a microphone, uh, A, because it saves my voice, because I've got another tour today. Very often there's a lot of noise in Prague. Sometimes it's lovely noise, but most of the time it's not. And uh, Prague sits in the west of the country, known as Bohemia. It's kind of like a beer growing region. Remember? They like making beer and drinking here, beer here. And the eastern part of the country is called Moravia, which is a wine growing region. Now, the name Bohemia and Bohemian, you'll see it quite often as you go around Prague. And it's believed that the name, this area is called Bohemia because around 500 years before the birth of Christ, there was a Celtic tribe here called the Boyu tribe, and they gradually migrated further west into France and into England and Ireland. And they were replaced by a German speaking tribe, and they called this the home of the Boyu. And German home is Heim, so they called it Boyheim. And eventually it got corrupted into Bohemium and eventually Bohemia. And people who live here are known as Bohemians. This, this old town square was established around about 1000 AD. 
And as you can imagine, it's changed quite a lot over the centuries. For instance, we're about two meters, four meters higher than the original Old Town Square. The reason being, they have problems with flooding here. We still have problems with flooding. Big floods, 22, 2010, 2012. Now, at the time, they didn't have the technology to lower the river, so they just raised up and up instead. Now, these houses that lie, or buildings that lie in the Old Town Square, when you go down into what you think is a cellar or basement today, it is the cellar or basement today, but that would have been the level of the Old Town Square originally. So it gives you an idea how much it changed over the centuries. Also, the look of the square has changed quite a lot, particularly during the 20th century. Do you know if there's any difference between the tower on your left and the tower on your right? And the one on your right is the male tower at all. And there's lots of examples when they put two towers on a church during medieval times. They always made one bigger than the other. The bigger one was always the male one. And historians say this goes to prove that even 700 years ago, men were thinking about their size. The Yanahus, which I guess loosely translated into Czech means John Goose. And the reason we talk about him is because he was one of the first religious reformers. He was trying to bring about changes to the Catholic religion about a hundred years before Martin Luther was nailing his 95 theses to the Wittenberg church door. I can't tell you how important this guy is to the Czechs. Because in 1968, when 300,000 troops of the Warsaw Pact invaded Czechoslovakia to crush the Prague Spring, which we're going to come back to later. So the Czechs climbed up onto this memorial and put a blindfold around the eyes of Jan Hus because they didn't want their legend to see that his country was being invaded and occupied yet again. Now, this was put here in 1915, at a time when the Czechs were trying to get their independence from the Austrians. You have to remember, this was part of a much bigger empire for nearly 400 years. And the Czechs were trying to get their independence, and the Austrians didn't want to give it to them. And so what this symbolizes here, because the Austrians didn't want this to go there, is almost like a huge middle finger to the Austrians so we want our independence. Well, yeah, it's like it now. used to stand here. It's known as the Marianne Column. And it was here for hundreds of years. It was put here in 1650 to say thank you to the Virgin Mary. Uh, uh, first of all, getting rid of the Swedes from Prague, because the Swedes tried to take over Prague in 1648, but they didn't manage it. And also to say thank you to the Virgin Mary for getting rid of the plague. Now, what happened is, over many centuries, this took on a different symbol. For other people, this became a symbol of the Adolf Austrian monarchy, the Habsburgs, but also Catholic, um, Catholic uh, oppression. And when they eventually got their independence in 1918, there was a, a raging nationalist who hated this column. And so he said he went to the local fire brigade and said, and I have permission to pull down the Marianne column, when I have some men, a rope and a ladder which they supplied. And on November the 3rd, they came in and they pulled down the Marianne Column. Now, do you know when you've always wanted to do something and then you get a chance to do it and you think, oh, I don't know whether I should have done that. And that's what people kind of felt. This almost appeared overnight. Now, what was really interesting, when they finished it, the time that they finished it, in other parts of the world, in the UK and the United States, People were pulling down statues that they felt represented oppression, slavery, colonialism, imperialism. Interestingly, here in the Czech Republic, they were putting them back out. Okay, so here we have the good of our magnificent astronomy clock. And the story about this clock is what was completed in 1490 by a man called Jan Krug, otherwise known as Tenoch. And it said that when he was Miss Magnificent clock, he was invited to a special banquet. A dinner given by the city of Greece to say thank you for creating something so unique and magnificent. Now he was very much enjoying himself. The food was good, the drink was good. But as the evening progressed, as the evening went on, he noticed that the city elders were leaving the room one by one. And eventually, he was all out. Suddenly the door burst open and in came two men. One with a red hot iron poker, the other with a large knife. They said they climb into a chair, they start out his eyes, and they cut out in the colors. That's quite a true point, isn't it? Any ideas why they did that? And it wasn't because he complained about the suit. <laughs> yeah, so he couldn't do another one. This would be the only clock of his time in the world, here in Prague, and nowhere else. But 
Jan was going to get his revenge because a few days later, when he was sent a little bit better, he managed to get into the power that he out of the pocket machines. He said that he felt for where the mechanism was and he went back as far as he could and he ran towards the cock, throwing himself into the mechanism, killing himself and damaging the cock so badly, it said, that it didn't work for another 100 years. Great story, but it's only a legend. Yeah, people get really disappointed to say that. Did they do the eye? Did they do the tongue? <laughs> People love blood and gore. Now, can you see this grey band that goes all the way around the outside? If you look at that, you can see writing in red, but also writing in black. The writing in red are festival days. The writing in black are the names of cats. It takes from 13, 14 feet, the 10th oldest university in Europe. And here we have the beautiful Theatre, which opened in 1783 but took longer to open than was originally planned. The reason being it took longer to build was because the university here complained, objected to the building, the theatre saying it would block out the light into its seminar room and assembly rooms. It's a fair point. If you've got a very good, beautiful view of the sea and your neighbour puts up a wall, yeah, it's a good complaint. Also, around the corner at the time, close by at the time, were two other theatres that don't exist anymore. But they saw this as competition. And so the university and the theatres between them hired a group of men whose job it was to come onto the building site at night and try and undo all the building work on the previous day. So it took slightly longer before it eventually opened in 1783. Now, one of the reasons we talk about this theatre is because it is the only theatre still standing in the world, the only existing theatre in the world, where Mozart actually premiered and performed one of his own operas. And that opera was from Giovanni. By all accounts, from what I've read, Einstein did not have a very happy time in Prague. He complained about the food, he complained about his apartment, he complained about bed bugs, he complained about the water, couldn't drink the water without boiling the water. His wife was sobbing and she didn't speak Czech. So all in all, I think things weren't very happy in the Einstein household. So after a year, they decided up sticks and they moved to Switzerland. And then not long after that, uh, they actually divorced. He was here in Prague. Einstein used to go to a lovely cafe called the Cafe Louvre. You didn't have a chance to go and see it. It's kind of, it's like turn of the century, 19th to 20th century. He's got that Austrian elegance and splendor. And it's nice to go there and get a coffee, beer, a wine, and soak up that genius atmosphere. Now, I'm sure you've been looking at this particular sculpture here. Um, and this is a character from Don Giovanni. His name is Il Commodatore. And um, he is the father of a young girl that's attacked by Don Giovanni. So the father comes to his daughter's defense. Don Giovanni kills him. And in Act Two, he comes back as this ghostly figure called Il Commodatore and warns Don Giovanni to change his ways. Otherwise, he will drag him down into hell. Now, as you can see, this is a hollow statue. And there's a little story about a young uh, student over here about eight, nine years ago who thought, would it not be interesting to see what this particular hollow statue looked like on the inside? Now, I don't know how she did it. Uh, she probably had too much to drink, as well as other substances. She must have been incredibly fatigued and incredibly flexible, but not that flexible. Because apparently she could get in, but she couldn't get out. So... <laughs> <laughs> so this is my advice for you when you're uh, going around Prague. Um, if you do see a hollow statue, please do not be tempted to climb inside, okay? And they call it the new town, even though they started building it in the 14th century, they still call it the new town. Now, the plans for the new town were laid down by the most famous Czech king called Charles IV. This is, I think, the only known picture of him. This is Charles IV. And if you ever have to remember one Czech king from history, if your life depends upon it, it's Charles IV, and you get lots of help. Charles Bridge, Charles University, Charles Square is on the 100 crown banknote. And in 2005, in a nationwide survey carried out by Czech television, he was voted the greatest ever Czech. Now, this street we're standing on is called Na Psikogye, which in Czech means on the moat, because Prague, like a lot of European cities, had originally had a wall 
with a narrow water going around it called a moat. And the way you got into the city was over a little bridge. And there were 13 gates at one time. So this is the, the Wenceslas, the patron saint, who tried to establish Christianity here in the 10th century. And those from the UK or English-speaking countries might know a carol sang at Christmas time, Good King Wenceslas. That's the Wenceslas they're referring to. He wasn't a king, he was only a prince, but it's still one of my favorites. Plus the ice cream. I've got the ice cream bag. Nice. So that ice cream came to 530 Czech krones, or krones, or kroner even, which works out to be about £18.50 or about 22 US dollars. Bit of a shock, to be honest, that's a lot. I think that's probably the most expensive ice cream we've had on this trip in the last 18 days. It's definitely the most expensive ice cream we've had in the last 18 days. Okay, this church here is known as the Church of St. Nicholas. And one of the reasons we talk about it is because it was originally a Catholic church, then it became a Russian Orthodox church. And when it was a Russian Orthodox church, Alexander the Tsar, Alexander the Second, gave them a stunning large chandelier to hang up. So if you get a chance, do pop in and have a look at it. It is quite stunningly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And also, if you are interested mm -hmm. in classical music, uh, they have little chamber concerts there most nights, maybe at five o'clock or six o'clock in the evening, should you be interested. One thing about quite interesting about the shops is there's no prices in the shop windows. So if you have to think about the price, you should not be going in. <laughs> Good advice from my aunt. It's about the 10th century. I think the first record of a Jew in Prague is around 935. Now, there used to be a, a community on this side of the river, but uh, and on the other side of the river. But through the efforts of Wenceslas during the 10th century, uh, Christianity was beginning to get established here. And so what happened was there was an increase in the number of anti-Semitic attacks, attacks by Christians on the Jews. So they felt threatened, and it said that they decided to settle in one place, so they came and they settled on this side of the river. Now, this was the third attempt to put a bridge over the river at that point. The first one was made of wood, but that was washed away in the floods. Subsequent colossal dates from uh, 880 AD, 9th century, over the castle complex in the world, as I said, now UNESCO heritage site. It used to be a number of separate buildings, but when Marie Theresa came, they actually had them all connected up to make a much more beautiful look. <laughs> But he never made it to the throne because he died in a kind of murder-suicide pact with a young lady who he was badly and obsessively in love with. It came as a great shock to everyone, including his wife Sophie, Princess Sophie of Belgium. And the next heir to the throne was a guy you might have heard of called Archduke Ferdinand. And he was the guy who was assassinated in Sarajevo in 1914 uh, on the journey. Um, if you've got any questions, I'll be, I'll be around or whatever. Um, it needs to be other than that. Um, thank you once again and take care. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Hi, Dad. Wait a minute. Well, I think so. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Oh, <laughs> We've just finished our free walking tour by Sandelman's Tours. 
like I said earlier, I'll leave a link in the description to find their website and to book this tour yourself. And we found it very informative. They're probably the best walking guide that we've had on this trip so far, do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely better than the Vatican ones. But yeah, we really enjoyed this trip, uh, this tour. And now we're going to find somewhere to eat our lunch because the ice cream we had earlier didn't obviously didn't fill it up. It wasn't lunch. Then we're going to walk back to the train station and get our train to Berlin. Are you ready to go to Berlin, Holly? Yeah. I think you're ready for lunch first, though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, let's start walking and find somewhere to eat our lunch. Point out, even though it is a free walking tour, obviously it's best and good manners to actually give a tip to the guide in the end. So we give the equivalent of around £30 in the local currency, so £10 each. We don't have time on this trip, but next time we come to Prague, we're going to visit Prague Castle over there. So we've only got a couple, just about two and a half hours left, so we just simply don't have the time. Good. Strawberry juice. You know, it tastes like if you squeeze a strawberry donut. Yeah, I mean, a bit that tired. It also tastes like some strawberry sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like, it tastes like a strawberry sweet if you buy it a sweet that is strawberry flavoured. It tastes like that. Yeah, it's very... So, Matthew has got a chicken breast and some french fries. Mm -hmm. Holly has got spaghetti pomodoro. It's like you get all the way through Italy, last route. I have gone for a traditional beef goulash. We finished our lunch and now we're walking back to the train station to get our bags and catch our train to Berlin. decided to come back out of the CD lounge which is behind us there it was just way too cramped so come out we're sitting on the floor drinking a slush we have currently got a 30 minute delay on our train up there so the Berlin one bottom screen 30 minutes hopefully it won't be longer than that so we're due to depart at 5 to 5 now instead of 25 past 4 which in the grand scheme of things that's not too too bad we'll probably be getting into Berlin probably 9-ish slot tonight hopefully we are now up to a 45 minute delay This is a tour of room 116 at the Hotel Gap Point Charlie in Berlin. So you come through the door, first of all, we've got the bathroom. So sink, hair dryer, tissues, towels, soaps there. Toilet here with some extra towels. Quite a large walk-in shower. And then into the main room now. So this is a junior suite. So we've got, got it for three people. We've got a sit-down area here. This is normally just a sofa, but it's also a sofa bed, so they pulled it out for Polly or Matthew to sleep on. And then this is the main bedroom part. Um, Matthew's on the bed. There's a fan right there. Well. Yeah, and there's one over there. So there's a fan there and fan there. So obviously there might not be air conditioning in the room. This is... Okay. So we've got a large double bed. Well, king bed by the look of it. Desk area. This is the wardrobe area. And a safe, fish bowl, I'm not sure about that. 
and then we've got a fridge and we've got some complimentary drinks as well water apple juice and orange juice in there and we've got some tea and coffee kettle okay that's about it i haven't had a look at the view yet out the window so let's have a look shall we what's out there we can't really see, but it looks like it's overlooking the garden, maybe. No. So that's a tour of our room. Wait, bathroom. Yeah. Oh, I went in the bathroom first, Tal. Okay, so this is Hotel Gap Point Charlie, really close to Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin in Germany. So we've arrived at our hotel. We've just done a quick room tour. The reason we didn't really vlog on the train is because it was very late. In the end, it was delayed by 82 minutes and our uh, carriage was quite full in first class. Some people were being kicked out because they were sneaking in even though they had second class tickets and they only, we only were in first class. What was a, a bit annoying for us is it was meant to be a restaurant car on board and that's where we were going to have our dinner tonight. Wasn't it, Holly? And you were really hungry. So we had our lunch in Prague. And we're going to have our dinner in the restaurant car, trying to experience something a bit different because we haven't really done that on this trip yet. But when we got on board, I said there was no restaurant car, so no food for us. And because we're trying to pack as light as possible, we're not actually carrying food or snacks around with us, so we had nothing to eat at all. And you were so hungry, weren't you? So what we're going to do now, We when we got to pro, uh, Berlin train station before we'd get something to eat there but everywhere was closed because it's almost 11 o'clock now because the train was so late and what we've done we've come to got a taxi to the hotel and it looks like we just try and do some uber eats or something like that so I'm just about to look at the food we can get via uber eats so once I've ordered that I'll be back so we can say what we've eaten yeah so let's order that now Ali Okay, uh, this is our Uber Eats. Matthew's got a crispy chicken burger. I've got a Whopper. We've got a couple of boxes of fries. They come really funny boxes here, actually, in Germany. It's almost like Chinese takeaway boxes. Holly's Sh got some chicken nuggets. Should I put this one off the box? Let's put it in the bin. Oh. And she's also got some spicy chicken wings. Matthew, actually, there's the curry sauce. Okay. And then we've got a couple of donuts dessert. for dessert. Oh, it's open. So uh, that's our Uber Eats for the night. Where's the it's half, it's underneath the desk. It's half 11 at night <laughs> in Berlin. We've just arrived after being 82 minutes late on our train. And our train didn't have a restaurant car, which it was meant to do, which was where we were meant to be having our dinner. But we're going to eat a Burger King and go to bed. Okay, our Uber Eats have arrived. So I think we're going to end this video here. We're really hungry and really tired. So we're going to start eating shortly. And if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. And here's Holly with her special message. If you like this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button. Bye! Hi. Next time on Travel Shorts Epic European Adventure.